So in the first two videos of this tutorial, uh, I drew these uh, uh, these framed walls, uh, sheathed them, and in this uh, video, I'm going to draw the loft and the roof. I'm beginning by just borrowing a two by four out of that uh, front wall, and this uh, house won't have a normal double top plate. Um, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different that'll make it a little bit easier to have a loft, uh, but the um, the the strength of a double top plate will be there and more. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I think I will speed it up um, so that uh, we can cover more ground more quickly. So as you can see, the side two by fours there are are overlapping the adjoining wall. Uh, that way it does give it the strength of a double top plate. And then I threw a 2x4 uh, layer on top of that. Uh, the last movement I just did was to put them in their own layer uh, so that I can work on them a little bit more um, directly. And now I'm lining up these um, uh, loft rafters on top of the existing uh, framing in the uh, uh, in the walls there. Now here I'm going to slow down and just for fun uh, show you uh, how you can uh, make your own uh, tongue and groove. Now this is, I mean, you don't have to do this, right? Because, um, you know, it's uh, it's your drawing. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I imagine most people probably don't draw tongue and groove uh, because it doesn't really matter. Um, but I thought it would be fun just to show you uh, how you how you could if you wanted to put this much detail into a SketchUp drawing. Uh, most of those lines will be deleted in a moment. Um, I'm just using them as guides. Now that all the lines that I don't need are gone, I can pull the tongue and, and push through the groove. Voila. That's not exactly right. Usually there's a little more taper there on the, on the um, tongue side. But it's just fun to be able to, uh, to put that much detail into a sketch of trying. You can put as much, as, as much or little as you want. So now I'll speed it back up. Best to make these components in this case. Uh, that way, if you make a change to one of these two by six um, pieces, uh, it's easier to to work with. Now I'm adding the beginnings of the rafters, and I just copied something. And usually, as soon as I copy it, I put it into the correct layer uh, that it should be in, so I don't get lost. And here I'm deciding on how how to cut the bird's mouth. You want to leave enough room on there so that uh, it, it still has a lot of strength, but you want it to seat nicely on the top plate. Now what I'm doing is I'm uh, I made a, a component out of that rafter and, um, and and then made a copy and moved it over so that when I edit one, both are edited. And this way, when I, for instance, right here, cut cut the uh, the space uh, for the, the ridge rafter at uh, or the ridge beam it's fine. Uh, right there I noticed a little error so I'm just correcting it. As you can see I, I left enough room there um, in the bird's mouth for the uh, uh, to include the sheathing on the outside of the house. Now I'm just lining up the rafters. It's always best, of course, to line up 
wood on top of wood so that your lumber all the way from the roof down to the foundation all lines up nicely. I'm pushing these down. Um, you'll notice on the sides I'm pushing the sheathing down to the top of the top plate and um, in the front and the back I'm, I'm doing it just to the bottom of the top plate and that's because the the end walls, the eaves, will have an additional piece of plywood screwed to the front. Here I'm putting in that uh, ridge beam. Uh, and here I'm, I actually made a copy um, and took out the bird's mouth uh, for the, the eave trim there. Putting in these uh, side pieces here, making a copy, flipping it around. Now I'm doing the uh, framing for these uh, eave walls. Just making copies, cutting through. Mm, but I forgot, I gotta have a piece in there. So I'll just throw two in. And Cut them again. Cut the little the little ones again. Made a copy of the whole thing. Stuck it in the end. Start doing the roof sheathing. Now, roof sheathing really should go go um, the long ways across the rafters. The floors should be the same way too. Although I didn't do it in this tiny house. I think in a tiny house like this, it, it doesn't make so much of a difference in the floor. But in the roof, you, you definitely want to do that. And then that way, you see most of the strength of that 8-foot that uh, piece of uh, sheathing is, uh, is over as many of the rafters as possible. Now here, I've slowed down. I'm, I'm showing you the um, um, measuring tape tool. What I've done is I, I took the measuring tape and I, I measured off a 4-foot spot. And now I'm adjusting both pieces of wood to that four feet. So that, that second board in the lower left is really now a four by eight sheet. On the ends, of course, you can't have an exact, you know, here I am taking it out, that little, it's a little marker. It's almost impossible to see, but there's a little guideline there that I made with that, uh, that measuring tape tool. So I split it back up again. And I'm adding in the rest of the lumber. So, and I copied that eight foot piece and then shortened it so that all the seams are over rafters. So, in the middle of the roof, you'll have the full eight foot length um, pieces of wood. On the ends, you know, you're not. You're going to have some, some shorter length. It's always good to stagger your seams too in a roof like that, it makes it stronger. So I just copy the whole thing. I'm going to flip it around, throw it on the other side. But it's not going to line up perfectly with the rafters, and that's because uh, the eave on the front and the eave on the back are different lengths. So I'm adjusting the end boards to the next closest rafter. I'm shortening them. And I'm just moving the 8-footers down, and it, and it changed their size. And I'm making these guys a little bit longer, but I checked to make sure that I didn't make it longer than 8 feet. Because that wouldn't be good. Now I'm putting things in their correct layers. Kind of a cleanup step. It's always good to keep organized like that. Okay, now I'm going to put in the uh, sheathing on the eaves. But if you're watching closely, you'll notice I'm actually making a mistake here. I went all the way out. I, I didn't cut off enough, so I'm flipping it around. I'll notice here in a minute. You'll see. And go back and have to cut all four. Now, had I made those end pieces uh, <coughs> components, see here, I just noticed. Oh, look, it's off. So I've got to cut these corners off. Had I made that a component, I would just have to do that once. But because I didn't, I just made them grooves. I've got to do it four times. So that would have been a really good 
opportunity for me to make a component. So in the next video, I'm going to do uh, trim, uh, or windows and doors, and then trim.